you treat a gunshot wound with a band-aid? No, I don't think you would. And just in the same way, I don't think that people should just say we should raise the minimum wage to help out poor people. Personally, I believe that if we increase the minimum wage, it will actually put us in a worse situation. Now, after doing some extensive research and looking at various books and articles, and also as someone who's personally lived off the minimum wage, I think I can give you a um, ultimately good, a good solid sense of information. Now, today I'm going to talk to you about where we're at with the federal minimum wage. I'm going to tell you about my solutions to fix um, our problem current problem, and I'm also going to tell you about what happens if we do increase the federal minimum wage. Now to start, according to uh, David Cooper, of the, um, he's a director at the uh, Economic uh, Research Institute, he says that actually our uh, minimum wage has decreased in value by 26% since 2009 and 40% since 1968. Currently our federal minimum wage is $7.25. Um, ultimately that means that if you work full time for an entire year, you'll make $15,080. Problem is though, is that is actually below the poverty line, which is at $18,310. Um, another thing is too, is that the Census Bureau says that actually 37.2 million Americans right now are actually considered impoverished. Um, with that, um, according to this uh, study, actually between 2019 and 2020, that rate of impoverishment has actually increased. Um, it's increased by 1% uh, overall for all the Americans. It's also increased by 2% for those under the age of 18, and has increased by almost 1% for those in married couples or um, families. Um, another problem too uh, with that is that with in terms of unemployment, there's 5.9 million Americans right now who are unemployed and 59 million of those who are actually on welfare. So being that we have such a large issue, and I've talked to you about the current situation that we're in. Now I'm going to talk to you about the solutions that I have um, to help the poor without having to increase the minimum wage. Now, first of all, according to Harry Halzer of uh, Time Magazine, he says that um, earned uh, income tax credits are actually a really good way of um, helping out impoverished families move forward financially. Um, so basically this program is meant for those families to get free money basically by working, um, they can actually earn up to $6,700 a year in tax credits and be able to pay off their federal and state taxes, but also possibly increase their income overall. A um, big part of that too is that ultimately will help them um, in the long run with a lot of, um, with whether that be investments and maybe like um, going from renting to buying a house. Also, just in general, we'll be able to afford more things. But to get that, um, to be applicable for that program, you need to have a job um, in the United States. You also need to, um, you don't have to work full um, around full time around the year, but at least for part of it. And then you also do need to have a social security number. Problem is though, is that this program, even though it helps out a lot of Americans, it's only available in 29 states. Um, ultimately what we need to do is make this a federal um, program and make it not just state by state, but overall all 50. And ultimately I think that'll help out a lot of people. Another thing is too, is that um, health insurance costs are very expensive. Um, according to CNBC, um, actually every American spends about $5,000 on health insurance each year. That's a lot. And actually, since 1984, um, health insurance premiums have gone up by 101% and we've actually lost a third of those services since then. And really, that's a big problem. It loses the value of it. And also, a lot of employees at companies actually rely on their employers to provide them insurance instead of paying for their own. But a lot of those minimum wage workers don't get that. Um, so with that, if we do lower those insurance premiums, actually employers will um, one, be able to raise their wages because they won't have to pay as much for insurance. And ultimately um, that'll help for the company as a whole and actually attract more workers um, to come and help them work and will also help lower that unemployment um, deal. Another part of that too is um, Medicare Part D, which is for senior citizens. Um, first of all, Medicare Part D can be extremely expensive, especially for those who are just living on Social Security. So with that, um, we need to lower out-of-cost payments. That way, um, these senior citizens don't have to pay so much um, because ultimately those out-of-pocket payments are can really racked up quickly. Also, um, we need to work on cost sharing and ultimately make the health insurance companies pay much more and if not the majority of the price of health insurance compared to just the uh, senior citizens. And finally, we also need to have cost predictability. That way, um, seniors can be able to um, understand what they're paying for in the future and be able to work with that financially. So now that I've talked to you about the current situation that we're in, but I've also talked to you about um, my solutions um, to helping out um, those who are impoverished. But now I'm gonna to talk to you about what could happen if 
we do increase minimum wage. Overall, um, according to um, according to uh, Michael Stein of um, the uh, Economic Research Institute, um, he says that actually it's a slam dunk case that if we increase our minimum wage to fifteen dollars an hour, it would be extremely detrimental to the United States, even the, especially for those who are impoverished. Um, even though we're coming out of a recession from a pandemic, it's not going to make much of a difference. Uh, first of all, uh, you're going to have an increase in po poverty because um, um, employment costs are going to go through the roof. And so because of that, a lot of people are going to have to lay off and a lot of people are going to lose their jobs. And the first person to lose their jobs is the minimum wage workers, which a lot of these poor people are in. So another thing is too is higher production costs. So because of that, the price of everything else is now going to rise. And so because that's going to be a lot harder to afford things. And also because of that, there's going to be less available and it's going to be harder to get things. So overall, that's going to be a struggle. Also, according to Forbes, it's going to greatly affect small businesses if you have to increase all of your um, pay to $15 an hour. Ultimately, um, actually, about 74% of those Americans are actually going to be affected by this greatly. And also, um, about $100,000 in um, and payments generally are going to be increased. If you make generally like around $200,000 in your business, now you have another $100,000 on your hands to pay for. So in conclusion, I've talked to you about the current state that we're in. I've also talked to you about um, the, pro the solutions that I have um, to fix this, but then also I've talked to you about what is dealing um, with actually raising it um, and the problems with that. So. Ultimately, like what I said in the beginning, you can't just put a bandit on a bullet wound and call it a day. Um, there's a little bit more extensive, um, extensive work to go into that. And so because of that, I believe that we can't just say raise the minimum wage and call it a day, but we need um, to um, go further and um, instruct that and kind of rebuild our system. That way, more impoverished people don't have to suffer as much.